Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jennifer Ngomalo. I do hope that you stick around by clicking that red subscribe button on the bottom and also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up to help with the YouTube algorithm. And so on to this video, we're going to be looking at Time Bank. Now there are a few things that I've learned since I started with saving with Time Bank and I did do and I did do a detailed video about Time Bank a while ago, I think last year. And I thought that it is time for me to come back and tell you about the things that I've learned so that I think that they're going to help you if you are saving with Time Bank. So if you want to know more about that please stay tuned So let us get into it. I think the things that I'm just going to touch on, it's not going to be a long video, but the things that I'm going to touch on firstly is what is time bank just for the people that don't know. Secondly is what are the things that I've learned point, And then we're going to touch on the last point on how much interest I've made since I started saving with time bank. And so the first thing that we're going to just talk about is what is time bank. Even though I know that most people are under, understand this bank, because if you're South African, you have seen it in your local stores like your pick and pay time bank is a digital bank which means that it doesn't have physical physical branches it is a, it is an online bank everything is done online now this is a good thing because it means that more people can actually have this bank i'm not sure if non-south africans can have this bank i really didn't do my, my research on that however you can go on their website if you are curious about that and check what are the rules and regulations when it comes to opening an account with them do you need an sa id or not but all i know is that when i opened my account i literally just needed an id number i didn't have to show them proof of anything even proof of residence i didn't have to do that i just had to to give them my my I had to give them I had to put in my ID number and the account was done within like 30 minutes like less than 30 minutes we were done actually and I got my card and then I was able to actually start using the card that is basically the that is the gist of time bank time bank it's not doesn't have physical branches you open account at a store so mostly you find them at pick and pay and boxer then you open account and then you get your card immediately and then as I said I'm not sure if it's open for other for non South African African citizens you can do your own research about that and also it is a digital bank now what I love about time bank is because it's a digital bank that means that a lot of costs are cut meaning that because it doesn't have branches all over South Africa like all everywhere in South Africa it is cutting a lot of operational cost which means that they are able to also come back when you're saving with them and actually give you a reasonable interest you know also what i like about them is you don't pay a lot of interest for actually having the account and using the account i haven't really seen much that i've paid for in my account since i started using it like i think for the past six months that's when i started past six months yes roughly six months there i started being active with using my account like when i go to shops i remember when i was doing renovations in this house i'll actually use my card and it taps it does everything and I really didn't see a lot of interest that was charged on my account, basically. And so that is what I love and think. And I think that it is a very good, it's a good account. It's a great account for people who earn, you know, a minimum wage, someone who gets an allowance, someone who doesn't want to be charged a lot when it comes to their salary. It is a great account. I would honestly encourage you to have a time back account. And if you earn below 10,000 or let's say 12,000, 15,000, you can actually have that account and be and let it be your transactional account and not have to pay a lot of fees. But then it depends on what you're looking at when it comes to a bank. So I, as much as I would, as much as I'm saying, I would recommend you to have an account and use it for trans trans transactional, you know, transactional banking. At the end of the day, what matters is what are you looking for in a bank? What do you need? What kind of services do you need? And so if Time Bank is not offering that, then there's nothing wrong with you being in whatever bank that you are in. However, if you're a person that feels the pinch when it comes to the charges with your bank and you can't take it, well, consider looking into Time Bank. So I'm not a, a spokesperson of Time Bank. I'm just saying that because I've used Time Bank and I feel like it's a very good bank and a practical bank and a bank that South Africans need right now, especially in this economy. So let us get into the things that I've learned so far. Okay, so the first thing that I learned is let's so 
on the on time bank name you have your everyday account so this is where money comes in name eh? and then you have go save there where you can go and save your money now the first thing that i learned that i didn't know is if you have time bank account and let's say for instance you don't use it to pay at the shops you don't use it to send money often like you don't use it for transactional things like most of the time to pay at the shop your account is not active let me just say your account is not active if let's say you want to send money to someone and you want it to be immediate you're not going to have that option it's not even going to be there for you so you need to, your your account needs to be active like you need to be using it in stores to pay with it and all the stuff in order for you to access the benefits of immediate transfer like immediate yeah immediate transfer of money and that immediate transfer of money is 7 rands not seven rands of each but seven rands once off and so that is one thing i noticed and so what i did is i started being active i started being active with my account i started using it at the shops i started putting money in it even though i know that this money i'm going to use but i'll put it because i want to make sure that it's still active in that month so it helps to be able to access access that benefit if you are not active in your bank account then you're not going to have that option of immediate transfer okay that's the first thing that i learned the second thing that i learned when it comes to saving now now remember i said that there is an everyday account and then there is a goal save now under goal save what i did was when i started saving is i'll open one goal save name now when you have one or two goal save let's just say say let's just say in your goal save you have money let's say you have five thousand in there and you decide that you want a thousand grand from that five thousand you can't withdraw just five thousand from the goal save just please understand this name because i don't want you to get confused i'm not talking about the every day i'm talking about the goal save let's, let's say for instance in your goal save you are saving for a holiday name now you want to use one thousand of that five thousand of your holiday fund you can't go on your goal save and withdraw and 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 withdraw five thousand only to to put in towards your everyday so what happens is the way that is structured is you have to withdraw the entire five thousand from the goal save into your everyday account and then from your everyday account you can withdraw the one thousand that you need now the disadvantage with this which is something that i've seen so many times with mine with my savings as well is that if you are withdrawing the entire amount because it doesn't allow you to take just the the percent just the money that you want it, it it wants you to take to basically it's like you're canceling you it's like you're canceling all your your savings you you are canceling basically all your savings what you are doing here is you are disturbing your interest now this is something that i think they did intentionally but it sucks <laughs> it sucks because let's say for instance in your five thousand you had earned around 150 of interest so far and you just wanted a thousand of the five thousand and then you leave the interest be no the moment you want that 1000 it means you have to cancel the entire 5000 which means that you also disturb your interest you also disturb the interest that is full flowing in your account and so the money comes out into your everyday account and then from your everyday account you get your 5000 with the interest that you have earned let's say your interest is 150 so it's 5000 5000 and 150 rents that you have and so you withdraw your 1000 and then you are left with 4150 now what you then have to do is you have to then go back and create a goal again and put that that 4150 into that goal however when you do that again so let's say that you had climbed the ladder of interest name because when you start saving with time bank, normally it will start off at three percent or four percent and then it will grow over time so maybe after a month it will go to five percent after another month of you keeping your save your money in there then it will go to six percent and then it will go to seven percent and then you know but eight percent you don't get unless you bank with with them so it will end around seven percent so let's say that you had climbed the ladder up to seven percent ne? the moment you say you want the money you just want a thousand you are disturbing that whole process you take your money it goes into every day then you are able to withdraw a thousand and then you have to go and start afresh 
at a bottom now you're starting at a bottom now where you are starting from four percent again and you have to work your way up so that for me i found to be annoying and i find that it's a disadvantage and so the way around it because i'm going to tell you the way around it is which is also not good ne? it's also not good i'm just gonna be practical but i'll share with you why but the way around it that i found is to split my money and that's actually what they encourage at time bank that's actually what they say is open as many goals save as possible if it means because i think you have about 10 open all of them if let's say let's say for instance you are planning to save 100 grand it wouldn't make sense for you to open one goal save open as many of them they're not gonna split your interest so if let's say for instance in one you have 20 in one you have 13 one you have 40 in one you have what what in it it will all have its own interest rates. It will all have its own interest. And so the reason why they encourage you to split your money, to not put all your money in just one goal save, is because also I think this is, the, this is also the reason besides tapping into more interest that you can get, but also when it's time for you to actually withdraw, let's say for instance, you want only 10,000. But you already you have like the 60,000 in one goal save. You're going to disturb the interest that you have gotten from you that you could possibly get here. And so it's better to split it. Let's say, for instance, your 50,000, you split it four times or five times. You can tap into the one that has the lowest amount and use that one. So that's what I've actually done. And my goal save is you. I'll have one that has, you know, the money there, the money there. Like I have around four goal saves right now and i know that they are the ones that i can reach i can tap into because they don't have the highest amount and also I, I don't mind disturbing those ones but i found that when i had just one goal save and i wanted to withdraw it disturbed my interest and it meant that it's, it felt like i was starting from scratch and so just be wary of that as i and i said the way around it is to create as many goal saves as possible now the disadvantage with this is that if let's say for instance you are planning to just save around around 20,000 in a year. What will happen is you let's say you're splitting it. In one goal save you have 10,000, in one you have 5, in the other one you have 5, ne? The interest that you're going to get there, yes, the the it, you will climb the the ladder ne, from 4, 5, 6 and 7. However, you get interest based on how much money you have in there. So the less money that you have, the less interest that you're going to see. Uh, over time and also it, it's kind of annoying when you see those one rents those you know those 50 cents sometimes about 50 cent or 30 cent especially when it's money that is less than 10,000 you don't really get a lot of interest from it. it it takes time for it to build up and so that is the disadvantage that you don't get as much interest than if let's say you had taken that 10,000 that that what 20,000 and just put it in one the interest will be higher and it will come in and you you will see it ne? however now if it come times for you to withdraw you will disturb that and you will have to start from scratch so those are the things that i've learned the first one is immediate transfer and then the second one is your interest when it comes to your savings under the goal save so as i said i will encourage you to split your goal save don't have just one have split them and then have one that you know that if anything comes up this is the one that i will tap into first and then the other ones are things that you will tap into later it helps to do it that way so that you don't disturb a lot of your your savings i found i've found that that one helps me because I've disturbed my interest rate too many times, which is why I'm going to talk about the last point, which is how much interest have I earned since I started saving with Time Bank. It's not a lot. However, I think that for the amount that I had in there, it is a lot. However, the way that I'm going to present it to you now, it's not that when you go into my Time Bank now, that's the money that you are going to see, but I've had to add up the interest that I've gotten over time considering the times when i had to withdraw because as i said when you withdraw and you say you just want a thousand you've disturbed your interest but you gained that interest so i'm gonna add up the, all the interest all the interest that i've gotten and i'm gonna give you a figure of how much interest have i gotten so far on how much i'm on 
on roughly how much money i had in the name so the first time that i have my notes here so i'm just gonna read so that i don't get it wrong the first time that i withdrew i had around 600 of the interest in it so i had to actually disturb the savings because i wanted to use a certain amount on this like so what i use for so in my time bank account i save with my mother name and so on cases whereby she's not feeling well and she needs to see a doctor we tap into those savings in order for her to go and see a doctor because on the day it is our money so we can in cases of emergencies in cases where we need it we do tap into it also time in times as well where i also need to go see a specialist and i know that my medical aid doesn't cover that i'm able to tap into that and actually use that money to go and see a specialist so the first time that i withdrew the money because i had only one goal save i had already accumulated around 600 rands of interest in it. and then second time is i had 670 however this time around i just redrew recently this time around i had split my goal saves now but all of them together they had given me around 670 and so i had to withdraw on just one goal save and leave the other ones and so when i left the other ones it was left with 300 and something but the other one i had to take it it had to cancel even the 300 but I, it's still my the interest that i gained ne? so in total it was 670 so when i added it together name that it was around 1270 so that's roughly how much interest that i've earned from saving with time bank and in an amount that is less than 35,000 and in less than 12 months it was like in less than maybe in less in less than what because we started being intentional about saving in time bank on February in January actually let me just say in January and then we started building it up building it up so I would say that in less than 12 months we had accumulated an interest that is roughly 1270 so and as i said in an amount of less than 35000 so for me that is a good interest that is good interest it just it just goes to show that if you were to keep your money longer into your savings goal you know for more than 12 months and keep adding into your thing because that's what we do every month we add and will you end up actually getting a lot of interest from time bank and also please do know that when you're saving with time bank you can only save up to a hundred grand you can't go over that i don't know if they're still if they're still working on actually improving on that one but i know that you can't save or over a hundred grand so let's say for instance you are saving now and you're around seventy thousand. just be mindful that when it gets to 100 grand you're not going to be able to save any more in there but if you have a family member or a partner then they can save also they can start saving on their side as well but i would say for me i love time bank just just to close this video up for me i love time bank i find it to be a very convenient bank i find it to be a south i find it to be a people's bank like a literal people's bank unlike you know some banks that have claim to be people's banks but they're really very heavy on fees and so for me i really find time bank to be a people's bank i find it to be a good bank and a very easy to use bank you know and so right now I have those i have the goal save where i save with my mother i have the goal save for a holiday and then i have a goal save for december you see i'm able to save for all these things in just one account without going to a, without going to a branch without going to a bank i can just do it on my phone however if you're a person that is scared of such things then you're gonna have a problem but for me I find it to be a very good bank. I've haven't I haven't had any attempts on my bank account when it comes to theft or fraud. I haven't had those. And so okay guys load shedding as you see it is blank now so with that being said i'm gonna close off this video right here because load shedding has disturbed us and anyway it wasn't like i had more things to talk about that's all that i actually wanted to talk about and so i will see you on the next one please take care and stay safe bye